Who doesn't love salmon? Well, I can understand if you're vegan, vegetarian, or simply just don't like fish. But either way, a salmon is a fascinating fish. It's absolutely gorgeous, and more importantly, they are beyond delicious. It's almost like a really nice piece of wagyu. Each piece of salmon has that perfect marbling of fat and fish. And there's something about that that just makes every single bite so special. Today, I'll combine a few of my favorite things in food to make a dish that's probably one of my top five favorite out there. Crispy rice salmon, or basically some really well-seasoned salmon sashimi with a little ball of sushi rice that's been deep fried. Now, there are a lot of things that makes this a really great dish. One, it's got a ton of different textures and flavors. It also plays with hot and cold, which to me is a really fun thing in cooking. And I just so happen to have the best type of salmon in the entire world, Aura King Salmon. People who've seen me on TikTok also know that I'm known for my knife throw. And I will say, I don't recommend this at home. I've been doing this for a long time, so I don't really mess it up anymore, but it'll bend the tip of your knife and possibly break it off. And it's also kind of dangerous. But with that said, I've gotten a lot of requests to start doing my knife throws in the YouTube video as well. So from here on out, I'm going to try to do a knife throw every single time. And to start, I'm going to keep it simple with just a good old classic. Now let's get back to our salmon. This right here is an Aura King salmon. These bad boys are straight from New Zealand. And if you talk to any chef, they'll tell you that this is the way to go. This is often referred to as the Wagyu of salmon. Each salmon even comes with a little identifier tag on the side. And up close, you'll see that it says Aura King. This fish, as with just about all of my seafood, is from John Nagel. Every single week, I shoot them a text asking what's cool, what's new. And this week, here's what we got. When I think of Aura King salmon, I think of that really vibrant, beautiful piece of salmon sashimi. There's something about this fish that is so amazing to me. And the more I look at it, the more beautiful I think it is. Now, instead of sitting here and looking at it, let's fillet this thing and make some crispy rice. Let's go. <laughs> to start filleting, keep in mind we always want to use a nice flexible fillet knife. My first cut will come right under here, where I'll cut at an angle right through the belly, and then up and around the head. Already you can see that this is some of the most gorgeous colored meat you've ever seen. I'll come in with my fillet knife and start cutting through the bones as I go all the way down the spine. As I get to the end here, I like to just lift up to help me through the rest of the process. Once we come off the end, I'll pick up my whole fillet and we have our first fillet of salmon. Ideally, we leave as little meat here as possible, and chefs have a really nice special trick to take off this part right here. This is how they'll make something like a spicy tuna or a spicy salmon roll. Simply take a spoon and scrape down the bones. We'll get this really nice, perfectly good meat that comes really cleanly and right off the salmon. You can fold this in with a little hot sauce and some seasoning and make the perfect spicy salmon roll. We've now gotten the side perfectly clean and we have a really nice bowl of great fish that we can use for something else later. So I'll set this aside. And now we'll flip our fish over. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side. I often like to get a nice grip on some of the fins, which then just allow me to come in with my knife again at an angle, wiggle that knife in, and once I hit the bone, turn it 90 degrees. Then I'll slide it all the way down, again just trying to get as much of that meat as possible, and then I'll come off the end. And again, once that's complete, I'll take my second fillet off. You can now see that once I've cleaned off this entire salmon, I can basically see my fingers right through here, and it's pretty translucent. At that point, we can throw this aside and use it as some sort of fish stock. If I run my fingers back down the fillet, I'll feel a bunch of pin bones in here. You want to take these out with a pair of tweezers. You'll see that they're pretty small, but you definitely don't want to bite down on one of these. And you also have to make sure that when you pull them out, you pull them out in the direction that they're pointing. If you try to rip them back a different way, they'll tear the flesh of your salmon, which we don't want. The only other spot we have bones on this piece of salmon are right down here by the belly. At an angle with my chef's knife now, I'll start right down by the base of the belly, which is this really fatty part, and work my way up right around these bones. When I peel this back, I'll have really, really nice fish here. But this is a separate piece that I have to deal with and work around such that I can get pieces without that bone. Now to pull our fillet off the skin, I'll cut my knife down to get a little handle here as I move my fillet knife back and forth all the way down the fish. This will perfectly separate the flesh from the skin. And we can do a little further trimming for this kind of part right here just to take that color off. Since we don't need full portions here, I just want to take the part that I think tastes the best, which is right near the belly. I'll cut this piece right off and then set this aside. This leaves us with what I think is the best tasting part of salmon. Now I'll cut this into really nice little little cubes. You can see here that this would be a really nice sashimi type portion of fish. And just like I was talking about, I always love that fat marbling. I'll go down the line and cut this into nice small cubes that can easily fit on top of my crispy rice balls. I'll take my salmon and place it into a bowl. I'll add about a tablespoon of soy sauce, a teaspoon of mirin, a teaspoon of sesame oil, a few tablespoons of Japanese mayonnaise, a nice handful of crispy fried onions, and about a tablespoon of furikake. Then I'll mix it up. Make sure that it's just the right consistency to be able to 
sit right on top of our crispy rice without dripping too much. This looks great to me. Now I'll set down my sushi rice, which again, I always prepare ahead of time. You can look up a really basic sushi rice recipe, but the number one thing is always to make sure you rinse it through enough until the water runs clear before you go ahead and cook it. Now, as we know, sushi rice is very sticky, which means I can form it into these really nice balls that will fry. I'll move my bowl out of the way and set down a ring mold. Then I'll press my rice into the ring mold and pat it down just a little bit until we get these really nice rice cakes. At this point, this is ready to fry. I'll drop the rice medallions evenly into my deep fryer. I wanna put them all in before actually dumping it into the oil because my goal here is to get the most even cook possible on these. My oil is set to 385 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'll fry these off now until golden brown. Here we go. Once they're golden brown, take them out. And that right there is some crispy damn rice. Once we have our crispy rice, which as you can see, you can get as crispy as you want. Just take a little bit of your fish and heap it right on top. I like to get this as high as possible. And I also like to do it immediately after this crispy rice comes out of the fryer. Then once I've got a really nice pile on them, I'll take just a few sliced green onions and put those on top. And that right there is my salmon with crispy rice. Let's taste it. Now, this is one of my favorite things for a lot of reasons. I just wanna show you this up close one last time here. We have a really nice crispy fried rice cake right below. Inside that is a nice pillow of perfectly made sushi rice. Above that we have our seasoned salmon in these nice cubes of that fresh fresh raw Aura King salmon. And on top we have nice thin green onion. Cheers. Oh my sh that was good. I watched Finding Nemo the other day and remember the quote, fish are friends, not food. But to be honest, I have an extremely hard time believing that right now. Look inside that rice cake. You can see that golden brown exterior and that perfect white interior, which means we did exactly what we needed to do here. We got that insane crunch while also keeping the inside really light and fluffy. And that fish on top, oh my gosh, that's good. Again, I'm not kidding when I tell you that this is seriously one of the best bites out there. For right now, of all the things we made in the Sea to Sushi series, this is by far and away the best. In fact, it doesn't even come close to anything else. This should be in its own league entirely. If you're gonna make any of the recipes in my Sea to Sushi series, this is one of the more difficult ones, but purely because it takes a little bit more time. Now, I'm probably gonna sit and eat all of these by myself right now, and I really wish I could send you some to enjoy with me right this moment. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and drop a like and a comment to let me know what I should make next time. See you later.